بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله العليم الخبير المتقن نظام العالم بلا معين ونصير فسبحان الله الذي حكمته بالغة وعلمه غزير ونعمه واصلة إلى كل صغير وكبير ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في نقير ولا قطمير ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي هدانا بكتاب منير ودعانا إلى الله بالإنذار والتبشير صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ما دامت الكواكب تسير أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولما ورد ماء مدين وجد عليه أمة من الناس يسقون ووجد من دونه ممرأتين تذودان قال ما خطبكما قال تالا نسقي حتى يصدر الرعاء وأبونا شيخ كبير صدق الله العظيم In Arabic there is a proverb that goes as follows صبرك في مصيبتك خير من جزعك وجزعك في مصيبة أخيك خير من صبرك To persevere on your own pain is better than to react, than to moan, than to groan, than to complain, than to wail, than to cry. And to react on the pain of others is better than to be silent. <coughs> this Ummah by design was never a selfish nation, it was a selfless nation. From the time we moved from collectivity to individualism, we fell. Because our agenda became my own self. I got to rescue, salvage, anchor, establish my own self, regardless of what happens to others. And in the way, this ummah fell in every regard. The whole design of our deen is a spirit of collectivity. The ulama say, اذهب أنت وأخوك بآياتي ولا تنيا في ذكري اذهب أنت وأخوك بآياتي ولا تنيا في ذكري The word اذهب indicates don't sit don't be idle move achieve accomplish leap strive اذهب don't sit idle إني لا أبغض الرجل فارغا لا في عمل الدنيا ولا في عمل الآخرة. عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه said, I despise a person sitting idle. This is not in the language of a believer. I have a flash of an eye now. سبحان الله. This is the beauty of the Quran. The Arabic is the only language that there is meaning to the alphabets. No other language has a meaning, the alphabet. You say A for apple, well nowadays it's not even that. But it's to educate, but A doesn't have a meaning, B doesn't have a meaning. If you study Arabic, Ba lil ilsaq, Ala lil isti'ala. Every letter has a meaning. Now look at the message and the richness. I said this ummah, always moved collective it was never itself Allah addressing the guardians of the orphans وَلَا تُؤْتُوا السُّفَهَاءَ أَمْوَالَكُمُ الَّتِي جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ قِيَامًا and do not hand over the wealth sufaha the weak minded the vulnerable the juvenile the young Meaning the orphan. His father has passed on, left behind wealth. Don't give him his wealth. In Bayan al Quran, it's mentioned Allah did not say, Wala tu'tu sufaha amwalahum. Allah said, Wala tu'tu sufaha amwalakum. Don't give them your wealth, meaning their wealth. وَإِنَّمَا أَضَافَ The reason why Allah directed 
the wealth of the orphan to the guardians which outwardly gives the impression of ownership is to impress upon the guardian protect the assets of the orphan like how you protect your own wealth وَلْيَخْشَ الَّذِينَ لَوْ تَرَكُوا مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّةً ضِعَافًا خَافُوا عَلَيْهِمْ هذا أصل عظيم من باب الأخلاق أنه لا يرضى لغيره ما لا يرضى لنفسه إن مسائل السلوك إن بيان القرآن it is written if your eyes close now and you leave behind children what would be your aspiration in your heart? I wish my siblings can rise above their bickering. They can embrace these children. They can invest in these children. They can take care of the well-being of these children. So Allah says that which is the aspiration of your heart, your brother has passed on. Now rise up and deliver as you would want society to deliver for your children. هذا أصل عظيم من باب الأخلاق. My message: This ummah was never individual. This ummah only moved collectively. There was only a common caring together. It was never about myself. And now it's only about myself. إذهب. I still wanted to develop on the move, advance, achieve. Don't sit idle. So when uh, the youth were in the cave, look at the richness of Quran. When the youth were in the cave, and then they slept for three centuries. And then of course, Allah revived them and you know, there's so much that can be discussed there. So when they got up, they started debating how long did we sleep? So some said, Half a day, some said one day. Qalu labithna yawman aw ba'da yawm. Half a day or one day. And even that, the scholars say there's a subtle indication to the fact that their number was seven. So there's difference of opinion, but the preferred view is seven. Qala qailum minhum kam labithtum. One person asked, How long did you sleep? قَالُوا لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمٍ أَقَلَّ جَمَعِ is three. I think half a day or one day. قَالُوا رَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا لَبِثْتُمْ Another group retorted by saying, leave this, Allah knows. So two groups of three, eight, six, and one person asking the question gives you the answer of seven that they were inside the cave. It's academic. فَبْعَثُوا أَحَدَكُمْ بِوَرِقِكُمْ هَذِهِ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ Send one of you with these coins. Recently, a brother who's into economics phoned me. He said, is there any proof in the Quran that you can keep some liquid with you, cash with you? Is there any ayah that supports the permissibility and approves and endorses the idea and the concept of keeping cash? I said, yes. He said, I spoke to so many people, but they couldn't give me an answer. I said, well, here's the ayat of the Quran. These were youth that were sleeping and they had cash with them. Of course, it needs to be qualified. It doesn't mean you just hoard and keep and not discharge, etc. There's a whole context. But in principle, Sufyan rahimahullah spoke that wealth in moderation is necessary. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about Dhul Qarnain, wa atainahu min kulli shay'in sababa. We blessed him with all means and treasures. Fihi dalalatun ala anna husul al mal, hatta al khazain, wa husul al ja, hatta al sultana, la yuna fil kamal. Hakimul umma makes mention in Bayanul Quran in Masailul Suluk. I normally tell people there's only one time I can give a short talk, and that is when I'm not sitting comfortable. So maybe that's a good way to not keep me comfortable, to tell me to stop. So Allah said, Dhul Qarnain had all the treasures. فِيهِ دَلَالَةٌ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ حُصُولَ الْمَالِ حَتَّى الْخَزَائِنِ The acquisition of wealth to the extent of treasures. 
وحصول الجاه حتى السلطنة and prominence to the extent of kingship لا ينافي الكمال does not go against the station of nobility and piety yes it needs to be regulated okay فبعثوا أحدكم بورقكم هذه إلى المدينة let's keep focus I started off with the Arabic proverb I'm driving a message that we are a collective ummah we care for the greater well-being of each other we, we're not individuals we're not individuals we, we, we grow with the growth of others this is how we care Sayyidina Umar radiallahu was coming back from uh, Syria and on the borders of Syria and Medina uh, recently we were doing some welfare work there and right in, in the deserts of Jordan close by to Syria I was doing some relief work with Al Imdad and we were in a tent and I'm looking at the desert and this incident of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu flashes at me and as he's crossing over at the border he meets an elderly aged frail woman and so uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu asked her sister do you know Umar she said may Allah destroy him may Allah destroy him so Umar said and why would you say things like that sister said he's done nothing for me and I'm sitting here so Umar radiallahu said but Umar is in Medina she was unaware that she's talking to Umar himself Umar is in Medina how can he keep himself abreast with events happening right on the border here at such a remote location and she gave a simple answer but so profound if he doesn't keep himself up to speed then he doesn't deserve to be the leader لو هلكت شاة في أقصى العراق لعددت نفسي لها مسؤولة لو هلكت شاة في أقصى العراق لعددت نفسي لها مسؤولة If an animal dies unfairly in the most remote part of Iraq I will be held accountable We haven't even Imagine you sitting in a family gathering of inheritance and there's a feud and there's a squabble and there's an argument and there's an altercation and each one of the siblings are sitting there to see how my brother can get more than me you're going in with the agenda that others can get they will get up more united than when their parents were alive but if each one goes in there that I need to take more before that man's questioning in the grave will be concluded unfortunately there will be fights here between the children so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says look at the teachings again وَإِذَا حَضَرَ الْقِسْمَةَ أُولُ الْقُرْبَى وَإِذَا حَضَرَ الْقِسْمَةَ أُولُ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ فَارْزُقُوهُمْ مِنْهُ وَقُولُوا لَهُمْ قَوْلًا مَعْرُوفًا When the inheritance, this is the preferred tafsir, there's different aqwal to this as well. When the inheritance has been distributed, there will be many people that will arrive at the house though they do not have any stipulated share just in anticipation that money is being distributed maybe something can come my way وَإِذَا حَضَرَ الْقِسْمَ أُولُو الْقُرْبَى يَا أُولُو الْقُرْبَى means the non is those that are not asaba, those that are not the will for rule, those that do not have any stipulated share, uh, distant relatives, distant relatives that would come to say, you know what, inheritance has been distributed, and the general masakin and the poor. Allah is saying, and the Amr is istihbab, it's meritorious and not mandatory, we need to qualify that, because the academics need to be in place. From the wealth that you are getting, and you are inheriting فَرْزُقُوهُمْ مِّن you receiving wealth pass it on to someone else you have a fixed share that you are inheriting he does not have a fixed share but give him something and if you are unable to give him something قُولُوا قَوْلًا مَعْرُوفًا say a kind word okay let me mention this here so that because time is really running out so anyway they get up and they say half a day one day take the money and go to the local city here and buy something halal they slept for 300 years when they get up they're worried if they're eating halal you would find many people are conscious of what they consume 
But as soon as they board an aircraft, everything becomes halal. It's amazing how people become relaxed with halal standards in the air. It's, it's, it's just strange. As soon as people board an aircraft, suddenly their standards of critiquing, processing, analyzing, understanding the standards, the benchmark, the yardstick, the process of halal just becomes relaxed. So take this money and go there and buy ayyuha azka ta'ama. Does he mention in Balagha in Bayan al-Quran? Fab'athu. La ilaha illallah. No book is in such detail. Fab'athu. So Allah didn't say ib'athu. Allah didn't say wab'athu. Allah said fab'athu. Basic Arabic. Remember I said idhab, move, go, achieve, accomplish. Don't sit, don't stagnate. You sit in just one place on your laurels, nothing's going to happen. Move, achieve. Ach uh, you know, have, have a legacy. In Arabic, you have fa and you have thumma. One is ta'qib ma'al wasal, one is ta'qib ma'al fasal. So fa comes for ta'qib ma'al wasal, which denotes sequence without interval. And thumma comes for sequence with interval. So basic Arabic, uh, there's not an Arabic lesson here, and I don't want to make it anything, it's simple, but just to appreciate the point. Right? You say, akaltu, fasharibtu, fanimtu. I ate, I slept, I drank, and I slept. Meaning that was the chronological order, that was the sequence, and it was uninterrupted in Arabic. If you say, akaltu, fasharibtu, fanimtu. Brothers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a little bit. I don't like a constipated audience. I don't like constipated audience. Yeah, I don't mean constip like yeah. Yeah, gotta be chilled, brother. Chilled, chilled. We yeah, we're learning, we're learning, we're learning. I'm learning, you're learning, we're all learning. Allah knows, we don't know. Hakim al Ummah has made mention when Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam was asked, Ayyun nasi a'lam. Who's the most learned person? So Musa Alayhisam said, Anna, I'm the most learned. And of course, that was the academic correct answer. فَعَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَى مُوسَىٰ إِذْ لَمْ يَرُدَّ الْعِلْمَ إِلَيْهِ The hadith of Bukhari, Kitab Al-Ilm, right in the beginning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala modestly reproached Musa alayhi salam because he did not direct knowledge to Allah. And then Allah tasked him to go to the confluence of the two oceans and meet Khidr because he has a different science. And then he embarked on this journey, and from this we learn fihi al jiddul baligh li talabil murshid ma lam yafut minhu haqqun awjab minhu that it is important to go in the quest of a mentor to enhance yourself, provided it does not come at the cost of compromising your duties. You don't abandon your family, etc., and suddenly you just go in. No, that's not the teachings. You take care of everything. You take care of everything. Hakim al-Umma writes in Bayan al-Quran, why did Allah send Sayyidina Musa there? لِتَعْلِيمِ الْإِحْتِيَاتِ فِي الْكَلَامِ لِتَعْلِيمِ الْإِحْتِيَاتِ فِي الْكَلَامِ لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله I'm just like, I don't even have words. Allah tasked Musa alayhi salam to embark on this journey to meet Khidr at the confluence of the two oceans to impress upon Musa alayhi salam the importance of precaution in speech. Now, how do we talk? How do we reply? Mufti Shafi rahimahullah, I don't want to digress here. He's written in Mariful Quran under this ayah that Allah gave a vague location. Allah didn't give a precise location. Allah said, Majma'ul Bahrain. I meet you in Bradford. Bradford, I meet you at the airport. By arrivals, departure, international, domestic, lounge, where? He said Allah consciously gave a vague location and not a specific location 
read in my full Quran, which resulted in Musa alayhi salam going beyond the point because the journey of knowledge is coupled with fatigue. The journey of ilam, there has to be fatigue. Atina Gada Anna Lakad Lakina Min Safarina Hada Nasaba. Oh, bring that food. I am so tired. I am exhausted. That's the journey. Allah didn't send the coordinates. To, Allah could give him the precise location. But Allah gave a vague location where the waters meet. The conf, yeah, somewhere there. Where we are there. And then, of course, he comes back. And musajjan bi thawbin. Khidr is Wa anna bi ardi kas salam. Wa anna bi ardi kas salam. And who's greeting you? Okay, it's a topic of its own. So Allah said, Fab'athu. So I said, Fa denotes sequence without interval. And Thumma denotes sequence with interval. So if I were to say, Akaltu, Thumma Sharibtu, Thumma Nimtu, would mean the same chronological order. I ate, then I drank, and subsequently I slept. The order was the same, but there was an interval, there was a gap. And if I use the word fun, that's the beauty of the Arabic language. So the adoption of the expression, and this is in Balagha there in the tafsir, you can read it. The adoption of the expression, فَبْعَثُوا دَلَّ عَلَى تَرْكِ التَّفْتِيشِ الْغَيْرِ الضَّرُورِ فَالْمَعْنَى أُتْرُكُوا مَا لَيْسَ بِضَرُورِيٍ وَأْتُوا مَا هُوَ ضَرُورِ So they're debating and discussing ah, Did I sleep for half a day? Did I sleep for one day? Full day? Half a day? One day? فَبْعَثُوا Go to the shop, the marketplace and buy By the selection of the adoption of the expression of fa, The Quran impresses Do not engage in something which is futile they don't focus on this, focus on what needs to be done. A believer is objective. A believer has a plan. A believer is not stagnant. Time is running, the clock is ticking. Years are going by, my brother. We have a plan, we have an, a, a, a meaning, a hadaf. So coming back to my point of collectivity, if the hub, Allah told Sayyidina Musa, go. And the verse I recited is also about Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, I'll touch on that as well. If the hub, go. Anta wa akhuk, you and your brother. The ulama say, anta wa akhuk, this portion of the ayah teaches us that this ummah is not based on individuality. It is togetherness. Go with your brother. Go with your brother. Idhab anta wa akhuka bi ayati. With my signs. Empower yourself with knowledge. Empower yourself with knowledge. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam when Allah sent him to Pharaoh. He said, Wa akhi Harun huwa afsahu minni lisana. My brother Harun is more articulate than me. Mufti Shafi'i rahimahullah has written there under this ayah in Surah Qasas chapter 28 that from this we learn fasahat matloob hai or uski sa'i madhmoom nahi hai. He's written there, heading there, you can read it. Fasahat matloob hai or uski sa'i, look it's so beautiful. To be articulate, to be eloquent is objective and to endeavor to achieve the skills of being articulate it's not something disliked. It's not something disliked. If you're enhancing your oratory ability so that you can have a more profound impression, that's fine. Of course, it's not the be-all and the end-all. But coupled with that also we say, as much as <coughs> Sayyidina Musa requested the presence of Harun alayhi salam, though Harun alayhi salam was senior, he was three years elder than Musa, 
Musa alayhi salam did not intervene for the presence of his brother on his seniority. He said he's more articulate. He didn't say send Harun worth, he's older. He said no, send Harun worth, he knows how to speak, he's more articulate. Yet, as much as he was sent, and he is referred to as Hibatullah, وَوَعَبْنَا لَهُ مِن رَحْمَتِنَا أَخَاهُ هَارُونَ نَبِيًّا غالباً in Madhari it's mentioned I read it in Marif al-Quran there that he is known as Hibatullah So eloquence is objective but that should not discourage the one who's not articulate because as much as the articulate Harun went, it was the stammering Musa who was Kalimullah. It wasn't the articulate Harun who's Kalim. I don't know if somebody knows what I'm talking. Like, please, thank you. A little bit of a Barakallah. I'm not addressing any alim here. I'm talking to people like me who don't know anything. Yeah. I normally say we live in a world nowadays, this is my own observation. Some people are learned and others are masters in camouflaging their ignorance. That's my observation I've seen in the world. Some people are learned, they're erudite, they're thorough, they're skilled, they're competent. And others have a gift of disguising their ignorance. The way they come across their personality, their persona, their demeanor, their body language, their intimidation. Oh, wow, this guy's great. And they're like, ah. <laughs> Those who are strong in knowledge. اذهب أنت وأخوك بآياتي ولا تني ونا يني ونيا do not be weak do not be lazy in my remembrance so a believer doesn't sit the word اذهب one word teaches you do move there's something I can do I can achieve okay the verse I recited before you <coughs> Allah speaks about the tale of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and the other day I was reflecting over this and uh, Allah put this thought in my mind and I credit it to Allah, may Allah guide one and all. I was doing tafsir now recently and another verse of Surah Qasas as well uh, that I can just share with you. So we all know the story and the tale of Qarun and how he came out and he had his pomp and glory and he made a mark and an impression. People were like, wow, this guy's, this guy's great. He's a possessor of a great share. This is what you call fortunate. And it even impacted the believers when they got exposed. And how we know they were believers? Those who were hankering for the world, they said, Oh, I wish I had like this. And subsequently they said, Waika an Allah. Hakimul Ummah says the word Waika an Allah makes us believe they were believers. Waika an Allah. Ooh, Allah knows best. Allah knows best who He gives and why He gives. Now here's a point of reflection. These people were sitting, Qarun came out, Jalalain says there were 4,000 in his might, in his clout, in his opulence, in his flamboyance, in his glitter, in his glamour, flexing his muscle on his horses, stunning, you know what, gorgeous, uh, striking, appealing, mesmerizing, and he's coming out and it was a spectacular sight, it caught everyone's eye, and it created turbulence in the heart of those who love the world. Those who were firm, they immediately said, no, 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 this is not what we want. So Allah put this thought in my mind that these people got exposed to Qarun and his wealth and it disturbed their Iman. Today, 
you and I consciously sit on social media and look for the Qaruns of today to disturb our Iman daily. So I sit in my room and I go and search. Wow, look at this guy. Oh man, oh. إِنَّهُ لَذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ إِنَّهُ لَذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ إِنَّهُ لَذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ Oh, إِنَّهُ My whole day looking for Qaruns. That's what I'm up to. Here they were exposed circumstantially. And we deliberately sit on the net and peruse and look. So what are we doing to our Iman? And I'm reading this ayah and I've quoted this. Allah puts another thought in my mind. The exact precise words that these people used for Qarun, Allah uses that same words for someone else. In my eyes, Allah says he's in no hudadu haddin adim. Idfa' bin lati hiya ahsan. Fa idha lati bayna ka wa bayna hu ada wa tun ka anna hu wa li yun hamim. Oma yulaka ha illa lati na sobaru. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ Learn to behave. Learn to respond in a good way. Regardless of what people tell you, you can be better or better. Respond in a good way. You will see this will convert enmity into friendship. But this is not simple. This is not average. This is only conferred upon those that have istiqlal in their mizaj, who are strong and firm and anchored. Actually, those who possess such character, in my eyes, this is the definition of absolutely fortunate. Allah uses the same words. In وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ So today we're sitting and we're going and looking for the Qaruns. And the media is designed. It's designed to show you this here. I said in my talk today, that perfect picture of that celeb with his spouse and child and a beautiful stroller in an exotic location with a great ambience and a bright smile. The only time they were smiling is when they took that picture. Go in the life of that celeb in his house. By Allah, there's no smile. There's misery in that house. But it's a perfect smile. The only curve that makes things straight, a smile. The hand, the watch, the tone, the color, the skin, the everything. The orthodontics. I often say in my talks, we spend an arm and a leg to straighten our jaws, but not our speech. A straight jaw will get you married, but a straight speech will keep you married. Oh, I'm getting married. I need my teeth straight. Yeah, he needs straight, straight, to see you with straight teeth. She wants to see you. The kiss needs to be perfect. Hmm? Don't let a fool kiss you and don't let a kiss fool you. <laughs> but straight teeth, my brother, will get you married. By Allah, straight speech will keep you married. Straight, straight jaws won't keep you married. Your reputation will get you married. Your character will keep you married. Because going forward, what's our whole nikah khutbah? What are the ayat? Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha wa koolu qawlan sadeeda. Wa koolu qawlan. I haven't even started and I've been told to end at 8. So I don't even know what to say. I'm still climbing to my cruising altitude. <laughs> it looks like we're going to have to start our descent. Okay, so here's a reflection. Look at, look at the spirit of Islam. What did I say the spirit of Islam is? Togetherness. It's, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the greater ummah. 
Here's a point of reflection. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam helped someone in Egypt. He walks in there. وَدَّخَلَ الْمَدِينَةَ عَلَىٰ حِينِ غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا فَوَجَدَ فِيهَا رَجُلَيْنِ يَقْتَتِلَانِ هَذَا مِنْ شِيْعَتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ عَدُوِّهِ So, حِينَ غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا When people were heedless, Jalalain says it was at the time of siesta, midday, people were sleeping. And then there's a feud, an argument, an altercation. One is from his clan and one is from his adversary. One is a Subiti, one is a Qibti. One is a Coptic and one is an Israelite. So there's an argument happening there. Musa alayhi salam comes. <coughs> he analyzes it and he realizes that the Subiti was on the receiving end. And the Qibti was the guilty party. So Musa alayhi salam admonished him, disciplined him, listen, restrain yourself, don't flex your muscle. Luqman Hakim said, إِذَا دَعَتْكَ قُدْرَتُكَ عَلَىٰ ظُلْمِ النَّاسِ فَتَذَكَّرْ قُدْرَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ Oh my son, when your muscle and your ego wants you to flex and show I can, then remind yourself of Allah's authority over you. Abu Mas'ud Badri says, I was disciplining my servant. And I was rebuking him. And then someone said from the back, Lallahu aqdaru alayka minka ala hadhal ghulam. Allah's got more power over you than you got over him. When I looked back, my eyes met with the Nabi of Allah. I froze. I said, Hurrun li wajhillah. Can I just then liberate him? And hopefully that would expiate and atone and offset my harshness. And Nabi Sallallahu said, أَمَا لَوْ لَمْ تَفْعَلْ لَلَّفَحَتْكَ النَّارِ If you don't do that, hell might not leave you. Authority, my honorable dad says, authority is so dangerous. You see a person on the other side of the counter, even if he's in a post office, suddenly he wants to show power. But it's a post office. Like, like I, I, I'm, not, I'm not condescending any position here. Yeah? Yeah. You, no, no, no. You, you, you're not even in an enviable position, brother. I know you there, but that's authority. That's what authority does. You just want to show power. You just want to, you know, join the queue. Join the queue. Okay, can you understand? Join. Hello. It is so dangerous. And today we have people who are holding positions of our institutions who are stuck to those chairs. When there's no taqwa and there's no khashiyat and then you have people in position and they are hoarding those positions. And then you had the likes of the khulafa who had all the taqwa and they want to relinquish. No, no, I, I don't want to take over. Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, listen, I'm not in charge. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, وَمَنْ مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُؤَخِّرُكَ وَقَدْ قَدَّمَكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُؤَخِّرُكَ وَقَدْ قَدَّمَكَ Who's going to tell you to step down when Allah's Nabi told you to stand up? Who's going to tell you to step down? I read an amazing point. La ilaha. Nabi alayhi salam is in his fatal illness. And then uh, he said, uh, he came back from Jannatul Baqi. And then he said, Wa ra'sa. Oh, my head is paining. And then when he came back, Aisha radiallahu anhu said, Bal ana wa ra'sa. Actually, my head is paining. Wa fihi mashru'iyyatu shikwa. Wa annahu la yuna fil kamal. To say it's paining, it's fine. You know, some people, they get too pious. They want to fly over Jannat. <laughs> relax, brother. Relax, man. Don't make this deen difficult. Please, please. Just, 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 just hang out. Some people like, oh, you know, I'm feeling tired. You may never say you're feeling tired. Okay, so I'm feeling fresh. <laughs> Back off. 
Sayyidina Musa said, Atina ghada'ana laqad laqina min safarina hadha nasaba. Dalla ala anna idhaar al-hal min al-ta'ab la yunafi al-kamal. Hakim al-umma is written in Masjid to say I'm feeling tired. There's nothing wrong. You're tired, you're tired. Never say you're feeling tired. What's this now? It's like, what happens to us? Sometimes we just lose that, that balance. Deen is complete. Deen is wholesome. Deen is user-friendly. Deen is user-friendly. It's practical. We don't need to add on. What was I saying? La ilaha illallah. And I like to curse people to see what you're following. See, let's see who, what was the point we were speaking? Aisha radiyallahu anha, mashru'iyyatu shakwa. So Nabi Sassam came from Jannatul Baqi. He said, my head. Aisha radiyallahu anha said, my head. So Nabi Sassam said, but Aisha, if your head pains, and Allah knows best, if it's critical and it's crucial and it claims your life, is it not comforting? Ma dharraki, law mutti qabli, ghassaltuki, kaffantuki, sallaytu alayki, thumma dafantuk. It is an authentic hadith. Aisha, if it so happens that Allah calls you, I will arrange for your ghusl, your kafan, your salah, your burial. I will perform your salah. I will take care of all the rituals. Aisha radiallahu anhu said, and what else? This is the hadith. And what else? This is what we read. This is where we get our cue. This is real. This is absolute. This is pure. This is wholesome. This is divine. Allah sent the Nabi of Allah with a complete life. Gives you all the aspects of human fluctuations. The captain said, no, a Nabi must be an angel. So Allah said, are you an angel? If you're an angel, then we'll send an angel on, as, as a guide. قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَلَائِكَةٌ يَمْشُونَ مُطْمَئِنِّينَ لَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَلَكَ الرَّسُولَ If those inhabiting the earth are angels, then an angel would come. لَظَلَلْتَ آخِرَ يَوْمِكَ مُعَرِّسًا بِبَعْرِ the azwajika fi bayti. This is a narration. I think after you conclude my burial, perhaps on the latter part of the same day, you might be intimate with one of your other consorts and spouses in my house. And how did my Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and your Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reply to the statement and sentiment of our honorable, venerable, august mom Aisha radiyallahu anha. May Allah be pleased with her. By Allah, we love her. We love her so much. We love her so much. The more you argue the nikah of my Nabi to Aisha, the more I love her. I don't have an issue when disbelievers object on it. Because Allah told me they're going to object. But I have a problem when a believer objects on it. وَلَتَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذًا كَثِيرًا They're going to tell you painful things. مَشْتَكَلَ عَلَيْنَا أَصْحَابُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ شَيْئًا إِلَّا سَأَلْنَا عَائِشَةً Abu Musa Ash'ari said, to resolve the complexities of the hadith which we could not comprehend, we would knock the door of Aisha radiallahu anha and she would resolve it. I, I, I don't go into academics and argue this. I'm happy. I love my Nabi and I love everything. I have no issues. No, actually, by the way, you know what? What? 
Nabi Sallallahu replied to Aisha radiyallahu anha by Fatabassam. He smiled. Not sarcastic, because that's also a dirty one. No, no, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's pure. He closed that whole chapter with a smile. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Thumma budi'a bi wajrihi alladhi ma. And then he explained, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, intensified. Then he said, لَقَدْ أَرَدْتُ أَنْ أُرْسِلَ إِلَىٰ أَبِي بَكْرٍ وَإِبْنِ وَأَعْهَدْ أَنْ يَقُولَ الْقَائِلُونَ أَوْ يَتَمَنَّ الْمُتَمَنُّونَ You know, I have such a good mind to call Abu Bakr and his son and then delegate, nominate and assign and appoint Abu Bakr so that people don't start desiring the post of Khilafat. But it's fine. Allah won't allow anybody else to be in charge besides Abu Bakr. It's fine. The ulama say, why did the Prophet of Allah request the presence of Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr? Even if Abu Bakr came, delegation, nomination, appointment, assignment was to Abu Bakr. Why was Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr been called? لِأَنَّ الْمَقَامَ مَقَامُ إِسْتِلَامَةِ قَلْبِ عَائِشَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا فَكَانَ الْمَعْنَى كَمَا أَنَّ الْأَمْرَ مُفَوَّضٌ إِلَىٰ أَبِيكَ كَذَلِكَ الْإِعْتِمَارُ بِحَضْرَةِ أَخِيكِ فَأَقَارِبُكِ هُمْ أَهْلُ مَشْوَرَتِ This is what's mentioned there, the Shurrah have written that I want to appoint your dad but the presence of your brother was to impress upon Aisha that my consultations happens with your family to win the confidence of Aisha as he وسلم, was bidding farewell and leaving this world. Oh man, okay. Uh, so what, what time is Adhan? Half past eight. And like half past for half past. Okay. All right, so then I'm going to have to end it on this note here. Because uh, obviously uh, uh, the brothers from Al Hidayah will come and inshallah speak. I still wanted to build up, but obviously my time is up. Uh, may Allah bless you all. Uh, may Allah reward you. I'm obviously here as part of the Al Hidayah, and I wanted to speak about uh, you know, the importance of uh, the campaign that they are running, and that is a collection drive towards. Uh, the betterment and enhancing of the masjid and the parking and there's a deficit there again What's the spirit togetherness collectivity investing helping? Uh, assisting empowering growing it that is the whole spirit and that's the point that I wanted to speak on Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam He's traveling from Egypt and he's coming to Madhya eight days of travel no food no shelter when he comes there to, to, to Madian, he finds two sisters. He finds two sisters that are at the well. <coughs> and they are giving water to their flock. Reflect for a moment. He needs help. He didn't have food. He didn't have drink. He didn't have shelter. He needs help himself. But he sees someone vulnerable. His empathy drives him to help others despite him being vulnerable himself. So he goes there and he says, Sister, what's the problem? They said, No, we cannot give because you know why? Uh, our dad is old and here they are men. So, uh, overpowered by empathy and care for others. Eight days of travel, he's in a foreign place. Imagine you alight a long haul flight and somebody asks you for help at the airport. Your head is spinning. You don't even know. Brother, where's the carousel? Where's the bags? What? Huh? Yeah, thank you. You don't know where you are. The man is traveling for eight days. That's a conservative opinion. And yet he's seen two sisters vulnerable. But he assisted. I always say, Islam teaches you to pray for the vulnerable. And not P-R-E-Y, pray on the vulnerable. Today we pray on them and we don't pray for them. If we can change it from praying to praying, we will reverse the narrative of the world. You see someone vulnerable, susceptible, unfortunately you exploit it. So he helps them, they go back home 
And then the father says, why you came home early? They said, a man has been kind. So he said, go call them. So then she comes. And the Quran says, فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَا قَالَتْ إِنَّ أَبِي I read something in the tafsir, La ilaha illallah, amazing, amazing. So here's a communication between a woman and a man, strange. But look at the platonic nature, the modesty, the bashful nature. She came and she said, my father is calling. She didn't say, I'm calling you. Asnadati da'wata ila abiha. Asnadati da'wata ila abiha. Wa'allalatha bil jaza. She said, my father is calling you to compensate you. لِأَلَّا يَبْقَى فِي كَلَامِهَا رَيْبَةً so that there's no room for any other interpretation. Uh, Musa, can you come with me? Why? Just come. No, 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 no. She spelt it out modestly. My dad, not me. My father wants to. And why is he calling you? He wants to reward you. Subhanallah. Inna qabool al-iwadi ba'da al-amali idha lam yakun al-amalu biniyyat al-iwadi la yunaf al-ikhlas. To accept compensation for your action when the action was not motivated by remuneration is not contrary to nobility. Do you know what I'm saying, man? Huh? Talk, please. I'm not talking to the ulama. Wallahi, I'm talking to like, you know, my age and younger. That's most of this. Said, come, my dad is calling you, he want to reward you. Now, sometimes some of us become very pious. No, I don't sell my virtue. I don't sell my virtue. So, openly he's telling Musa, come, I want to reward you. And he went. And then, of course, that became the catalyst. And then, look at this, this point, and I'm going to end. And then, of course, uh, Mawlana Mahmoud will come forward. That uh, she said, Dad, why don't you employ this man? He's, he's a good employee. Ya abati sta'jirhu. Just mention it tafsir. Subhanallah. She said, employ him because the best employee is honest and trustworthy. She didn't say, ista'jirhu li amanatihi wa quwwatihi. She didn't say, employ him. He's strong. He's honest. Avoiding a direct compliment from a strange woman to a man. You know, if a woman praises, my wife in the early years, now it's over because it's been so much, but in the early years, whenever a woman used to phone her and say, oh, I love your husband's talks, and that's if I overheard, so she would say, listen, she phoned, she says, she loves your talks, not you. <laughs> she loves your talks, not you. <laughs> so she's always got... So obviously, look, look at the words of the Qur'an. La ilaha illallah. Ista'jirhu, employ him. Inna khayra man ista'jarta al-qawiyu al-ameen. In a generic, neutral, impartial context, the best employee is honest. Wa hadha min afdali al-madhi min al-mar'ati lil-rajul. This mention made by Al-Qur'an in Balagha. So in an indirect way, without going direct. Musa alayhi salam needed help, but he helped someone more vulnerable. And that's my message. Maybe you're waiting for Allah to answer your dua, but that dua to be answered is waiting for you to help someone else. You're waiting for a miracle, your prayers to be answered, this to happen, that to happen, but maybe the thing holding it back is for you to help. And here's a call. We are at the doorstep and at the threshold of Ramadan. Uh, Al Hidayah that have invited me, mashallah, they are extending the masjid and they are doing some renovation. I urge you, my brother, in the spirit of what we discuss, time has been short, but I believe that our interaction will be meaningful and inshallah it will propel us to focus better for Ramadan in the spirit of togetherness and collectivity. In the little time that we have, I urge you, I request you, I implore you to respond wholesomely, openly, selflessly and generously. May Allah bless you.